Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and today we are looking at the Tales from the Crypt from 1972. Tales from the Crypt stars Peter Cushing, Ralph Richardson, Joan Collins, Ian Hendry, Richard Green, Patrick McGee, and Nigel Patrick. Tales from the Crypt 1972 was directed by the great Hammer director, Freddie Francis. But Tales from the Crypt was not produced through Hammer Films. It was instead produced by its somewhat competitor. From It's still a British film company, but it was a film company called Amicus Films. And this is my first review of a Amicus Films. This anthology is... I know what you're thinking. I mean, why are you doing a horror anthology like Tales from the Crypt on, uh, around the uh, holiday season? Well, that's because one of the segments, the first segment, in fact, is... All Through the House, which was from, not Tales from the Crypt, but it was from the comic The Vault of Horror from February, March of 1954. And this segment stars Joan Collins as a wife who kills her husband while her daughter is sleeping upstairs the night before Christmas. And uh, about the time she kills him, she finds out on the radio that a mental patient has escaped from the local mental institution. And then he shows up at her house attempting to kill her. She keeps him locked out, but then after a while she starts to call the police, but then she realizes she's got her dead husband there. Um, this was one of the best um, segments in any uh, horror anthology. It is a great segment. Joan Collins is amazing in it. Now they did remake this for the Later, Robert Zemeckis produced Tales from the Crypt TV series on HBO with uh, Mary Ellen Trainer playing the uh, Joan Collins role. Um, and Larry Drake, of all people, playing the, uh, the Psycho Santa. But, as much as I still like that one, Amicus version of All Through the House is a really great atmospheric and cool segment, especially for a Christmas kind of segment. It is well played. It has the Christmas music playing throughout the sequences, and it is just the way it is shot by Freddie Francis is amazing. He's here, Mommy. I let him in. It's Santa. <sighs> so this segment alone is the reason this is being reviewed. But that's only one. That's only one segment out of this. And I, it might not be the best one in the whole film, but it is memorable. They started this thing with a great segment to start this film. Ralph Richardson should have mentioned this before, but 
Ralph Richardson plays the Crypt Keeper in here. He does not look like the Crypt Keeper from the comics, and he does not look like the Crypt Keeper that you know of from the HBO television series, Tales from the Crypt. He looks like a normal old man in a robe. But he is good at what he's doing, setting up the segments and everything. But the next segment is entitled Reflection of Death. And it is actually from a Tales from the Crypt comic, number 23, from April, May of 1951. Now this one tells the story of a character played by Ian Henry named Carl Maitland. And uh, he's a married man who is sleeping around on his wife with his secretary on a secret rendezvous together. But on the way there in their car, they have a terrible accident. And this is where the story um, shifts from a traditional view to we are seeing it through Carl's point of view. As he wakes up confused, um, his secretary girlfriend is missing. She's no longer in the car when he wakes up. He gets out. He seems to be okay. He begins to walk around um, calling out for help and then eventually decides to try and hitchhike. A driver comes by him and shrieks in terror and drives off, leaving him, leaving him confused. What was his problem? He finally makes it back to his house where his wife, his actual house where his wife is. He looks in through the window and sees her with another man. And he wonders what is going on. He knocks on the door. And when she comes to the door, like the driver alongside the road, she acts terrified of him and slams the door in his face. So he goes to his girlfriend secretary's place hoping to find out something from her of what's going on she comes to the door and she's blind she tells him that they were in an accident and she lost her sight in the accident how did i brought it back after the crash huh? and i was blinded Blinded. And Carl was killed. Okay. <laughs> Two years ago. Really cool story this one is. Um, well executed. The the whole POV thing is very unique and very cool for a uh, for a. Uh, segment like this. It is just so, so cool. Um, so yeah, this one is equally as good as All Through the House to me. Um, and then we come to the third segment, and it is entitled Poetic Justice. This one, again, is not from a Tales from the Crypt comic. This one is from The Haunt of Fear, number 12 from March-April edition of 1952. Now this one is probably my favorite story on this because it stars Peter Cushing as Arthur Edward Grimdike, a kindly old man who loves children, has... has uh, like an area where he's taking care of 
a bunch of uh, dogs and everything. But there is a rich, snobby, uppity neighbor living around his area that looks down on Grimsdyke and thinks that he's a disgrace to the neighborhood. They need to get rid of him and everything. And it is sad to watch this asshole character of John just making life miserable for this old man played beautifully by Peter Cushing. He just makes you feel so bad for him. And then none of that makes Arthur give it up and leave. He stays his ground and he stays there. And then on Valentine's Day, John decides to send him really nasty Valentine's Day cards, supposedly addressed from all of the different townsfolk. And when Arthur reads these, they it it breaks him. And this poor old man kills himself. It's not the end of the story, though. Because one year later, around Valentine's Day, a year later, Grimsdyke comes back from the grave. And he goes after John. This is, like I said, this is my, probably my favorite story on this whole film. It is, it makes you feel bad for Peter Cushing's character of Arthur Grimsdyke. I mean, and uh, you hate the character of John. And you want him to get his comeuppance bad. So when it finally happens, oh, it's pleasing. It's really pleasing. And then we get our fourth segment in the film. It is called Wish You Were Here. It is another one that isn't from Tales from the Crypt. It is from, again, The Haunt of Fear, issue number 22, from the November-December of 53 issue. And this one stars Richard Green and it's based on the monkey's paw story. And if you're not aware of what that is, it's, it's where someone gets a monkey's paw and they hear a story of that if they make a wish upon this monkey's paw that Anything they wish will be granted. But there are weird consequences to anything you wish for. And Richard and his, uh, Richard Green's character of Ralph Jason and his wife end up, uh, they end up getting this monkey's paw. Um, and they end up, you know, going ahead and she she goes ahead and wishes for them to come into a bunch of money. And uh, she gets it. 
but not the way she wants it. Because Richard Green's character of Ralph Jason is on his way to the bank, and he's in a horrible accident and dies. And she is notified that she is going to get a big inheritance from his uh, um, life insurance policy. Upset by this, she, she decides, you know, against a doctor who knows about this and has heard about this before. Um, he warns her not to do it because someone else had done it. She had wished for her son who had died to come back. And when he came back, he came back a hideous zombie-like creature. She doesn't listen, and she says she wants her husband back. He arrives in a coffin. Open it. Quickly. No, no, don't look. His body was mangled in the crash. Mangled? It wasn't mangled. Mr. Jason died of a heart attack at the wheel. So, she got him back, <laughs> but he's still very much dead. The doctor tries to convince her again, but she doesn't listen again. Again, she makes her wish. She wishes that Ralph... Richard Green's character can be with her forever. What happened? What have you done? I wished him alive again forever. But don't you realize he's been embalmed? His veins are filled with embalming fluid burning into him. Oh, no. <laughs> and she wished him to be alive forever, so she tries to kill him to end his suffering, but he can't die. It's a great story. Excellently done. I mean, each one of these is excellent. Well done by Freddie Francis. Well directed by Freddie Francis. And then we come to the fifth and final segment of this film, which is called Blind Alleys. And this one is indeed actually based on a Tales from the Crypt comic story from issue number 46 from February, March of 1955. Now this one stars Patrick McGee and Nigel Patrick. Nigel Patrick plays a character named Major William Rogers. And Patrick McDee plays George Carter, a blind man who is like the leader of these blind people in this little home for the blind that the Major Rogers has just been made a manager of, that he's supposed to be in charge of. And he is extremely cruel to all of these poor blind people. And Patrick McGee's George is constantly fighting against it and trying to get these poor blind people, uh, him, him to consider them people and stop treating them like cattle and being cruel to them. He has a dog, Major Rogers does, named Shane, that if any of them even get angry toward him and, and try and make any moves, he'll try and sick that dog on them. 
you know, the dog will get violent and growl at them and everything. And uh, then finally, um, one of the blind people, George, is trying to get the major to get them help because they're really getting sick. And he doesn't listen. He ignores him. And uh, the, the poor man dies. The man is dead. seen enough. Him and his fellow uh, blind cohorts in the building end up uh, confining the other uh, help in the uh, building. And they end up doing a revolt against the Major and separate him from Shane. He's unconscious. He wakes up unconscious in a room. Great uh, story. The the asshole again gets his comeuppance. Very similar to the poetic justice um, segment earlier with um, Peter Cushing. Um, Freddie Francis directed a great film with this. This is this is just an amazing horror anthology, um, and uh, I, I I just love this thing. It, it is one of the best horror anthologies ever made and uh, it doesn't get enough credit I don't think in the horror community most people think when you say Tales from the Crypt they think the um, Robert Zemeckis HBO television series it wasn't always that way but my review of Tales from the Crypt, 1972. I give this film an 8.5 out of 10. This film, like I said, is one of the best horror anthologies ever made. And uh, got great performances all throughout it. Um, and like I said, the, I think my favorite on this is... Uh, Poetic Justice with uh, Peter Cushing as Grimsdyke. That that is just such a touching and sad story of what that asshole John does to uh, to Arthur Grimsdyke in that story. It's just 
excellent story and makes you really feel for him because of Peter Cushing's excellent performance. So, what did you think? Have you seen Tales from the Crypt, 1972? Do you agree with my review? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this horror anthology. What was your favorite segment in here? I know a lot of people would um, that do know about this film and, and love it like I do. I know a lot of people's favorites is uh, All Through the House. Um, and I love that one. I do. I love every um, segment on this. But uh, like I said, I, I, I have... I have a weak spot for poetic justice. It's just a, it's just so good. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help my channel out a lot. And that comes to a close for another review. This is only the beginning of a few season, seasonal, Christmas season videos that I will be doing. So, <laughs> I hope you will uh, join me in the next videos as well. Thanks for watching.